Thank you so much for joining me for today's Wednesday Webinar Wisdom webinar. Uh, my name is Hannah Scherer. I'm the Director of Customer Success here at Big Marker, and today's segment is all about webinar Q&A sessions. And before we get started, uh, just a little bit of housekeeping. Um, obviously, surrounding today's webinar is all about Q&A, so we will be hosting a Q&A at the end of this today's session. You'll notice in the chat panel that you can either send your questions in via chat or you can use the Q&A portion to ask your questions there. Um, I typically prefer them in the Q&A section in case you do uh, want to send regular chats, but uh, just letting you know where those can go, and then we'll just get to that at the end of today's session. Also, a little bit more about today's session. So this is an extension of a blog post from our blog, The Webinar Guide. Um, I'm going to post that link to this blog here in the chat. You'll be able to access that at any point in today's session. And uh, Wednesday webinar wisdom segments typically run between, you know, anywhere from 15 to 30 minutes, so they are pretty short. So they're all about learning about one uh, specific aspect of webinar hosting and how you can essentially lev leverage that to um, boost and host your best ever webinars. So without any further ado, we're going to go ahead and get started. And the agenda for today's uh, webinar is uh, a few things. The first is we're going to go over uh, essentially the five reasons why you should pretty much always, unless you know if you have a very specific niche, um, host a Q&A session following uh, or during your webinar. Um, then we're going to be covering the best practices for hosting a live Q&A. And then we're going to jump into actually using that Q&A data to follow up uh, effectively with your webinar attendees and how to leverage that data in other aspects of your webinar hosting as well. And then finally, as I mentioned in the beginning, we will be doing a Q&A session about uh, Q&As. So if you do have any questions regarding today's session or um, anything around webinar hosting, I'm happy to help as well. So let's get started. The five reasons to host a Q&A session um, really vary, but the first and obviously the most important and probably also the, mo the most um, kind of like duh is that you're going to be getting really valuable questions. So you'll want to field them um, to get insight from your audience on, you know, what they've learned or what you've talked about. So, you know, things that you may not have thought about before, um, also feedback that you potentially were or weren't anticipating would always be very handy to you to essentially boost your webinars for the future. So, you know, it's it's really, really important to have these Q&A sessions, not only to kind of bring everything back into this kind of conclusion point, but also to really ask these these uh, or, or have this essentially this exposure with your audience members to be able to to field those questions. So again, pretty obvious there, but it is the first and foremost reason why you'd want to do it. You know, um, your audience is going to obviously be the one in taking that knowledge, so it's really important to to cater to their needs. Um, but the second point that I you know definitely want to um, kind of ramp on as well is that you really want to keep your attendee interest peaked. So if you think about attending a webinar, um, you'll definitely kind of have, uh, as the host, you know, you have your emotions going, you have a little bit of adrenaline, you know, public speaking may not be your favorite thing or, you know, or you might love it, but regardless, you're going to be the amplified one during the webinar. So you're going to be the one talking the whole time, you're going to be the one that's, uh, you know, really having that brain activity, that, that interaction. But remember, it is kind of one-sided, you know, you're the one presenting. Um, you don't want to be that kind of teacher in the boring class where all the kids kind of lost interest. So um, by not only prefacing your webinar as saying that you're going to have a Q&A session at the end, um, but also finishing with that Q&A, um, it's not only going to make sure that people come prepared knowing that they can get their questions answered, but it's also going to kind of uh, fill that space um, with, oh, you know, I do have that question. I'm going to ask it at the end. It's going to keep them a little bit more energized, a little bit more lively during the session so that you don't really have to kind of worry about, are they retaining any of this knowledge? You know, are, is what I'm saying actually going to be meaningful to them? You know, as, as we kind of go back to, to part one, they're definitely going to be asking these questions about things that they, 
they really want to know about. So, you know, definitely uh, keeping their energy peaked uh, is, is, a, is a really, and their interest peaked, excuse me, is a really, really big aspect to that. Um, another thing that you can do, and this is just kind of a pro tip throwing this out, if you do want to keep uh, your audience engaged, also you'll want to check out, we have more blog posts on this on, on the webinar guide, but um, throwing in a little bit of uh, interactive pieces um, during your webinar is really going to break down um, that potential like uh, boringness factor of, of the presentation, especially if the material is on the drier side. Um, so things like Q&A sec uh, sessions during the webinar is really helpful, but then also you can do kind of little snippets like polls. You can hand out documents on Big Marker, which is really cool. Um, just kind of things that will get that interaction going during the webinar, um, you know, throughout it to, to really keep their interest peaked. And then also um, that Q&A session at the end to really um, bring everything kind of full circle there. The third, op or the third kind of point here and, and reason why you should be hosting a Q&A section, session in your webinar is that it really does make your audience feel valued, not only by you, but also your company. So if you can imagine kind of spewing out um, all this uh, knowledge or, um, you know, information about your company or product or, you know, whatever you're hosting your webinars for, um, especially if it's for a larger company or, or a company where people um, typically don't feel um, as connected, uh, it's certainly going to make them feel like what they're saying or what they're asking matters and that you're actually taking the time to, um, you know, answer their questions and have this kind of face-to-face -face or this exposure um, with them on a one-on-one -on -one or, you know, kind of few on one basis is, is really going to be uh, beneficial not only to you but also to your brand. Um, it, it's really going to position you in, in, in a really positive light, um, which is certainly important as we all know for, for just making sure that um, you know, your, your brand and your um, kind of presence online is, is uh, valued. The fourth uh, kind of reason to host a Q&A session um, is, is to gauge attendee comprehension. Um, and this is a huge one because if you can imagine if you're hosting, uh, you know, half hour, 60 minute webinar, um, you want to know at the end, did people understand what I was saying? Did it resonate? You know, and, and beyond that, did it make sense? Um, if you can imagine, uh, especially on, on very, like, uh, like I was saying, like kind of drier topics or, or more, um, you know, comprehensive or even abstract topics where, um, you do really want to make sure that people are understanding. Um, it's really, really, a really important. I can't stress it enough to host a Q&A session during your webinar to really make sure that people are understanding what you're talking about and to get those questions answered. And then taking that data, and we'll kind of cover this a little bit later, but using that to strengthen your future presentations. So, you know, how can I better my presentations? Like, for an example, if I'm hosting a software demo and I'm breezing through something that um, I find out in the end nobody understood what I was talking about, of course I'm going to want to kind of reshape the way that I talk about it in a future session to make sure that that's really going to resonate with people. I mean, if you can imagine, uh, you know, hosting a software demo again, because I do that so often on Big Marker, um, getting through and working so hard on a presentation then finding out that nobody is understanding, um, you know, it's, it's, it's definitely important to take that into consideration when, when hosting future ones. You know, you really, um, at the core, want to make sure that people are getting good stuff, good content out of your webinar, and they aren't just walking away scratching their heads. So definitely using that data to strengthen your future presentations and also understand if they actually got anything out of it is, is a very, very valuable aspect of hosting a Q&A session. And then the final reason um, to really host a Q&A session during or, or after your, your webinar is that you'll want to use that data um, to understand what people are actually interested in. So um, if you are hosting, again, this software demo, and I'm going to keep using that example um, throughout today's session, but if you are hosting a software demo or a product demo and, you know, you were breezing through um, maybe uh, the marketing aspects or, you know, something, something specific and you find out in the end that everybody is having questions about, you know, this one specific area, you know, it's a really, really good idea in, your, in the future to 
take some more time and go through things that you find people are more interested in so that you can tailor it and, and really get the perceived value of your company or your product and uh, into the mind's eye of your attendees or your audience. So um, not only understanding uh, what people are interested in, but then also, again, using that to, to tailor future presentations to it. Um, also, it's going to be really, really helpful for user experience if you work for like an internet company um, or even just a product and, and finding out, you know, what aspects people are interested in um, and then going back to your team and, and providing that data and providing that knowledge. I mean, it's, it's completely a valuable resource, not only just for whatever you're doing, but if, it's, if it is around your company or whatever you're doing, at, um, you know, within your company, you'll definitely want to take that back to your team because it's just, it's completely invaluable. So we've gone through the five reasons why you should do it, but you know how to host an effective Q and A session is something that I get asked a lot. So um, I have put a few best practices here that we can kind of cover, um, just you know from kind of a macro perspective here. Um, obviously, there's there's many more points that we can cover, but you know. For the brevity of today's session, I'm just going to cover um, a quick five. So the first and foremost is I always suggest writing down or at least preparing um, ahead of time what you think these anticipated questions will be and also answers for them. So if you think maybe a particular portion of your webinar will be really confusing or, um, you know, or, or you're, you know that you're not going to cover it in much detail and you think that there's going to be questions about it, you're definitely going to want to, to write those down or, or at least have answers in your mind about what those questions will be um, just so that you'll have them ready to go. Um, I can't tell you how many times um, I've kind of wished beforehand that I've prepared a little bit better uh, about what people might be asking me because you don't want to be sitting there scratching your head um, saying like, hmm, um, you know, you, you want to have really concise and, and really um, beneficial answers for people as soon as you can. Um, my personal favorite is best practice number two. Um, this is something that I can't stress how important it is um, for a Q&A session, um, and that's coming prepared with canned questions. So that means just having a few questions in your back pocket. It can totally be from, uh, you know, best practice number one, um, it, you know, questions that you think should be asked or you want them to be asked. Um, but the reason for having canned questions ahead of time is that almost always with a Q&A session, either um, maybe you don't have many people in the, in the session, maybe you don't have uh, many people who want to share questions or ha haven't really thought about it, um, maybe you didn't introduce a Q&A session at the beginning or they've just been really soaking everything in, and it takes people a long time. We call it the pregnant pause where it's just like, you know, you're like, okay, does anyone have any questions? And it's just kind of cricket. You don't want that. You want to kind of not only entice people with these canned questions, so, you know, questions that you've um, thought of ahead of time, but you also kind of want to fill that silence, fill that pause so that they can have some time to think about their questions and then also um, ask them so that there's n no awkward silences. Um, you know, you keep the, the momentum of the webinar going the entire time. And then a few kind of uh, other best practices that I, I definitely recommend is uh, giving instructions. So it might sound a little weird, um, but with a webinar tool, um, it's, it's I, at least I find it's very important to es essentially tell people what you want them to do. Instead of having a, uh, like an in-person presentation or something where, you know, the, the protocol is raising your hand, getting called on one at a time or, you know, something like that, you know, with, with an, an online space, a webinar space, it is a bit different. Do you want people to ask questions in the chat portion? Or maybe, as you remember from earlier in today's session, I asked, um, you know, if you wanted to ask your questions in the Q&A section uh, of the chat, you know, that would be preferable for me. So telling them ex almost exactly what you want them to do and where you want them to ask their questions and how you want them to ask your questions is going to better prepare them um, for the Q&A and also just give them a little bit of uh, an understanding because as, as simple or as, as um, mindless as it might sound, you know, people might be confused. Do, does she want them in the chat? Does she want them in the Q&A? You know, does she want them me to use my microphone to, to, to ask the questions? You know, it's kind of um, something you, you really want to cover beforehand. Um, and then also setting a time limit. So generally speaking, um, I'll do 
uh, about a 15 minute Q&A. Um, if it goes over, no problem, unless I'm on like a hard um, deadline. But if you don't set a time limit, um, you know, it tends to either run on or you're just kind of sitting here as a, uh, a presenter wondering if people are, you know, asking questions or if they're they're waiting for something or, you know, you just want to kind of set that time period so that people know in advance, okay, if she's only doing like five minutes for q and I I got to get my question in right away. Or maybe I want to sit around and see what other people are asking and kind of write everything down. I have a lot of time, you know, 15 minutes or whatever. So I would say 10 to 15 minutes is usually um, the standard. Um, since today's sessions are pretty short, we'll stick to about uh, five to ten minutes, but you know, I always recommend uh, getting your questions in before anyways so that people will have uh, them ready to go. And then finally, a best practice is following up. So what do you do with all of this, uh, you know, Q&A stuff that you're getting? So questions, um, perhaps you're hosting a really large webinar and you're getting like hundreds or, or you know, tens of questions or something like that. And uh, perhaps you can't answer all of them or, you know, you don't have answers for all of them. Um, whatever the case may be, it's really, really important to utilize your Q&A session and to follow up after. So, you know, with that, I am going to go to this kind of last slide here, which is leveraging your Q&A data. And the first kind of piece here is following up, um, you know, offline. So all answered questions must be responded to as soon as possible. I can't stress that enough. You know, whether it's a sales webinar or not, all of these attendees or leads or whatever you want to call them, they are hot. They are interested in your topic. You know, they are interested in your webinar. They attended. They took the time out of their day. It's really important and courteous for if you did have a question that you either didn't get to or um, you uh, weren't sure of the answer or you just wanted to follow up and, and kind of give a longer winded answer than you did in the webinar, it's really important to send out those emails, those follow ups as soon as possible after the webinar. Not only will they appreciate it, um, but it will also stay fresher in your mind so that you can really make sure that, you know, you're, you're getting to the full meat of the, the response that they're looking for. Also, it's really important to uh, utilize either the most asked questions or the most important questions that you feel um, were the most important, at least, um, to you utilize it in, in essentially the best respects. So um, I always recommend creating new content around it. So um, a blog post is great if you have a blog. Um, you could even do like a new webinar, like a follow-up webinar. Or if you just want to do something small, you don't want to do a ton of planning, you could even just do a newsletter. Um, you know, five things um, that people or five most asked, asked questions on on uh, our product or something and that kind of newsletter would be awesome and people would get a ton of value out of it so you know utilizing that data and not just kind of keeping it internal to that webinar um, is going to have a lot of value not only for you know what you're doing but also for your uh, attendees and, and uh, customers and consumers and you know whatever you're hosting your webinars for and then the final thing, which um, doesn't always sound like, uh, you know, your first kind of thought when you're thinking of a Q&A session, um, but I certainly uh, take questions and user data very seriously, is using question data to make internal decisions about your product or service. So that means, like, again, using that uh, software demo example, um, everybody was really interested in all of the marketing tools that we had. Maybe we should actually expand on those and offer more. Um, our users are, you know, you can kind of uh, segment your users or, or kind of tune in to your targeted market um, a little bit better by finding out what people are asking and, and gathering all of that data and then making product decisions to essentially cater to those people. These are the most interested people in your product. It's definitely, definitely important to um, cater to, to their uh, needs and, and wants. So, you know, those are kind of my tools for leveraging the data. You know, as we've gone through, we've gone through best practices, we've gone through, um, you know, the reasons why, and then now we kind of have the Q&A to the Q&A session. So um, thank you again for joining me for today's session. We do have a few questions coming in, so I'm going to go ahead and ask those. Um, but thank you again, and this is recorded, so you are welcome to watch this at any time. So... Without any further ado, I'm going to go ahead and answer those. So we have one coming in from, 
I have one from Janet here. So how does the Q&A dynamic change if I have multiple presenters? Um, that's actually an awesome question. So um, if you have multiple presenters, specifically if you're honing, hosting like a panel discussion style webinar, um, it's definitely a best practice to use one person to moderate the Q&A. Um, and the reason why I say one person is that if you can imagine having all of your panelists, um, especially if they're guests, speakers, they, they aren't super familiar with the system, you know, there might be some clumsiness um, involved, there might be some confusion. So, you know, having one specific moderator, and it, I believe it should always be you, um, you know, the, the admin or the host of the webinar, um, just kind of fielding them to whomever is, is asking them, um, then you can kind of ask those to the appropriate person and also keep it, you know, fairly organized. So, excellent question. Um, if you don't have multiple presenters, just kind of um, doing it just as I'm doing right now, fielding them, um, you know, answering them in a, in a kind of timely fashion here. And then I have another question coming in from Darren. Um, what if someone asks a question I don't want to answer? Um, this actually does happen. Um, it's happened to me before. It's not necessarily that you don't want to answer it, but it might be something more appropriate for offline. Um, you know, if it is asked publicly, it can be a little bit difficult. Um, that's why I do recommend that people always ask their questions in the Q&A section. You can, on Big Marker, um, hide the view of the Q&A so that people can't actually see the questions coming in. Um, it would just be uh, your, you know, who, whoever has that admin control can see it. Because if somebody asks something or, or kind of disrupts it, maybe they have you know, a question that you really don't want to get to. Um, it's kind of better if it's off in, in a place where only you would see it and then you can address it offline. You definitely still need to follow up with it. You know, I, I recommend emailing, um, but at least you'll, you'll have it kind of in a place where it's, it's um, only between you, the two of you. Um, now, if they do ask it publicly in the chat and you really don't want to answer it, I don't recommend kind of ignoring it. Um, I recommend if it's... I, if, if it's really hard to answer and you don't really necessarily want to, at least call it out and say, hey, this, you know, or it might be like a, a personal issue or something, or maybe you just would say something like, oh, um, we would love to help you with this or something like that. Um, we're going to talk more about it offline. Kind of addressing it so it doesn't seem like you're just shooing it away and then taking care of it. I would probably take care of it first to show that it's a priority um, after the webinar. Alrighty, and then we have... Uh, oh, okay. I have another question coming in from Janine, but she just said uh, you just answered it, so that's great. I do have one more question coming in from Caitlin. Um, so, and then Caitlin asks, is it better to have attendees ask their questions out loud or to text them in? Um, I'm assuming, Caitlin, I, I'm assuming you mean like uh, chat them in or, or something like that. Use text uh, kind of in, in, the, in the chat space. So, um, that's actually up to you. I mean, if, if you want to do uh, like a, a nice out loud um, kind of dialogue. Um, you can certainly do that. I per personally prefer having text-based questions so I can field them ahead of time. Um, again, if you remember back to my last question about if you maybe don't want to answer something or it's a, you know it's sensitive or or you know something you don't really have the time. You're kind of put on the spot as a speaker um, to answer it if they are out loud. So, you know, personally, I prefer it to be in text form. Also, it allow, allows me to kind of um, keep the momentum going, um, you know, and, and maybe if, if we do have a dialogue, then it's going to go on for a while. You know, I don't know. So it, I, I prefer text. But if you do want to get that kind of back and forth from your audience, you can certainly bring them on. Um, you know, with Big Mark, you can just do like a one click, uh, like, attendee mic share or camera share or something like that, and you can allow them to, to share their microphone or webcam. Um, it's just kind of your prerogative when it comes to that. Um, okay, so it sounds like, yes, uh, Janine said uh, I answered her question. Um, we got all of the other questions out of the way. I'm not seeing any additional questions at this time in the Q&A or from private chat or public chat, so um, I'm going to go ahead and assume that all questions were answered. Um, I will stick around for the next couple of minutes in case anyone thinks of anything in the meantime. Otherwise, thank you again for attending. This will be recorded, and the link that you entered today's webinar will also obviously uh, be the place where the recording is posted. So 
you can just watch that. Um, it should be posted by the end of the day. And then also, if you didn't see earlier, I did post the link to the full blog post on Q&As. So you can go check that out. Um, it's just in the chat here. Um, and, and you can check out all of our blog posts about webinar hosting on the Webinar Guide blog by Big Marker. So thank you again. I'll stick around for another couple of minutes. But it sounds like we are wrapping up for the day. So thanks, and happy hosting on Big Marker.